Hello, I'm David Adrian. Um, I'm presenting on half of, behalf of my co-authors, Zakir, Golshan, and Alex. Um, and we'll be discussing a Zipier ZMap uh, internet-wide scanning at 10 gigabits. Um, so as a quick refresher, about one year ago, uh, Michigan released ZMap. Uh, ZMap is an internet-wide port scanner capable of uh, scanning at 97% the maximum theoretical speed of gigabit ethernet, which results in TCP SYN scans of all of IPv4 in under 45 minutes. And then we can use ZMap to enable insights into sort of global internet-wide security ecosystems and the internet as a whole. But um, networks can be faster than gigabit ethernet, or at least our own got a little bit faster in fall when we were lucky enough to get a one or a 10 gigabit uplink into our lab. Um, so unsurprisingly, 10 gig allows for 10 times as many packets, um, about 14.88 million per second, rather than um, 1.48. Um, and so the natural question with this was, well, now that we have this faster uplink that's still ethernet, let's plug ZMAP in and let it run real fast. But it turns out it doesn't run much faster at all on 10 gig. It runs about 100,000 packets per second um, faster, only slightly over one gigabit. So, so why not full 10 giggy? Um, why wait 45 minutes when we could wait four and a half minutes? Um, so what I'm presenting here is, is uh, I guess, Zipier ZMAP. Um, ZMAP that runs at 95% of 10 gigabit ethernet and completes single port TCP scans in under five minutes. Um, so the roadmap for the rest of the talk, um, first I'm gonna discuss the optimizations that we made that made this possible. Then I'll move on to sort of discuss what happens when you scan faster than one gigabits per second and then move on to you know, applications and conclusions. Um, so during the optimization process, um, we concentrated on three different things. Um, we wanted to uh, make ZMAP more parallel by parallelizing address <laughs> generation so we could take more efficient utilization of our hardware. Um, we needed efficient blacklisting and whitelisting. And then obviously the most important part, we need very, very low overhead sending of packets. We, uh, when you're sending 14.88 million per second, that's a budget of about 200 cycles per packet. Um, and for reference, a cache miss can be around 120 cycles. So first off, address generation. Um, the original ZMAP, um, in order to generate a random permutation of the IPv4 address space when scanning so that we didn't overload remote networks, um, just use a cyclic group to iterate over the integers. Um, so we just pick a generator and we multiply the current address by the generator and so on and it makes this nice loop. Um, but as you can see, there's a clear dependency between the current address and the next address. And so when you parallelize this, if you have multiple send threads that are all sort of using the same state, you need to take a lock on the critical section, update the address, and then unlock. It creates a bottleneck. So our solution to this, um, to have independent send threads, was to shard the cycle into disjoint sets. And we just did a simple math trick and noted that if we replaced our generator with G to the N, rather than moving forward by one step, we move forward by several steps and we offset all of our shards and each thread gets an independent one and everything is independent and parallel and no more lock. Um, moving on to uh, uh, blacklisting or address constraints. Um, so during the process of, of scanning the internet, we've been doing it for several years at this point, um, People will notice in their IDS logs, um, and sometimes they will get mad at us and they will email us and, and accuse us of various things. Um, and, and we will respond saying, um, you know, we are, we are doing research, we, we are just making a small number of connections, accessing things that are only publicly available. Um, and then they may or may not decide to request to opt out and have us not send them packets. And so over the past several years, we've had about uh, a little over 200 uh, organizations request to opt out, opt out um, which created about 1,100 entries of different net blocks on our blacklist, resulting you know, about 0.15% of IPv4 has opted out. Um, for more details on like blacklisting and scanning, um, Zakir will be discussing this um, at the main conference on Wednesday. Um, we also use the blacklist to, res uh, to exclude the IANA reserved addresses. Um, as well as private land space, so like 0 slash 8 and 10 slash 8. 
Um, so to do this efficiently, um, what we do is we model IPv4 as a binary tree. Um, and we split every level of the tree represents one more bit of prefix. So in this example here, we would be blacklisting 0 slash 2 and whitelisting the rest of the address space. Um, then once we have this tree representation of our blacklist, um, we can use it to determine exactly how many addresses, uh, n allowed addresses there are. And then we use the tree to map the indices sort of 1 through n into the allowed addresses, the first one through the nth one. And, and then the, the sort of insight that we do here is rather than iterate with the group over addresses directly, um, we iterate over these indices and then look up into the tree to ask what the address is. But as you know, tree lookup log n, not great, as well as all of the, the, the lack of cache locality because you have pointers to your nodes. So to avoid this in, in the common case, um, since we're usually scanning the entire internet and only a small portion of the internet uh, requested to, to be blacklisted, um, we can move large slash 20 whitelisted blocks out of the tree and into an array. And then for the first however many addresses that exist in the slash 20 blocks, we can just look up into an array and see that they're, um, they're whitelisted and we can avoid the tree. And in practice, this is a very large portion of, of the internet when you're doing internet-wide scans. Um, so, so that's blacklisting. Um, how do we actually send packets at line rate? Um, the big issue with sending packets at 10 gig E is that, that these SYN packets that we're sending out are, are the minimum size packets. They work out to about 64 bytes on the wire. Um, and the Linux kernel just can't keep up. It can, can saturate a 10 gigabit connection with larger packets, but not with these minimum size packets. There's just too much stuff happening at once. So uh, we use the PFRing ZC uh, zero copy direct NIC access DMA, whatever your favorite word for bypassing the kernel and talking directly to the driver um, to get direct um, access to, to the packets that you're sending out onto the wire. And um, this is a library built by a, a company called NTOP. Um, and it allows us to bypass the kernel to reach a 10 gig E line speed. But it only does that if we can create packets fast enough for it to actually send at line speed. So to do this, we sort of had to combine the new sharding <laughs> with PFRing. PFRing fundamentally allows for only sort of one thread to be operating on the interface itself at a time. And this didn't correspond with our old architecture. We had several send threads um, that would all, you know, uh, look at the global cyclic group and then um, send things on the wire. And so we sort of spun that around by giving each of several packet creation threads their own shard, as discussed earlier, and having a single send thread pull from all of these packet creation threads. Um, and the send thread powered by PF ring can then just shoot packets out as fast as possible. Um, and so when we combine all three of these performance enhancements together, we end up being able to scan uh, very fast. So what happens when we do this? Um, before I go into a few more details, I just want to emphasize that 10 gig E is, is very, very fast. Um, that the results we're presenting here are as much a stress, tech, stress test of Michigan's network as they are a study of ZMAP. Um, uh, we've got about a 2 by 10 gigabit uh, uplink for the building that then connects to our, our merit uplink and so on, but um, we're using a lot of bandwidth here. So as some reference, this is all of the commodity uh, traffic in and out of U of M. Um, and you can see there's some spikes there where we're doing experiments. And then um, you want to make sure your sysadmin, you're either friends with them or you wait until they go home. Um, <laughs> because this is what happens when you run a scan at 10 gig E. You dwarf all of the other traffic um, at the university, um, and you actually hit every uh, slash 16 over 200 times a second. So how fast can we do this? Well, the answer is in slightly under four and a half minutes. Um, we peaked at about 14.23 million packets per second out of a max of 14.88. Uh, 95 percent of, of gigabit line speed. But then the natural question once we've done this is, well, does it still work? Are you still getting high quality results? So to measure this, we took a look at the hit rate of the scan. 
And the hit rate is the percentage of hosts that respond when we do the scan. Um, and so comparing this percentage to the percentage that uh, respond at the lower speeds at one gigabit per second, um, you can see there's a very large drop. There's around 37% less results when you scan at, at 10 gig versus at one gig. So why is this happening? Um, well, as you can see here, um, we, we took some 50 second long sample scans at various speeds where we'd let ZMAP run for 50 seconds and then measure the hit rate. Um, and you can see at around uh, 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 4 million packets per second, you'd get this pretty linear drop off um, and that just the faster you go, um, the less and less results you get, which is interesting compared to the original ZMAP work, um, which examined speeds between zero and one gigabit and found very, very little correlation, as you can see at the front of the graph. So where are these packets going? Um, we, for those 50 second sample scans, um, we recorded uh, the rate that we were getting Synax back. Um, and, and during these scans, we have the 50 seconds of scanning followed by an eight second cooldown period during which we just wait for packets to come in, but we don't send any more out. Um, and this is a standard in ZMAP. There's always this eight second cooldown period. Um, and as you can see, as soon as we stop sending, um, there's a large spike in the number of received packets. And keep in mind that we're sending packets at around um, 100 times the speed that we're receiving packets. Um, so there's a massive decrease in bandwidth utilization when we stop sending. Um, so this was the, the, the spikes at the start and the end here were, were indicating to us that, that this was a network issue. And to examine this further, what we did was we split ZMAP up onto two machines. We had one machine send using the spoofed IP of the second machine. And as you can see in the graph on the right, um, we still have this peak at the start, but we have a, a slightly different behavior at the end. Um, but the, this results in about a 3% higher hit rate than <coughs> than the scan from a single machine, not nearly enough to explain the 37% the drop that we see overall, which indicates to us that packets are getting dropped on the network and that the, the difference in the behavior is due to the slightly different network setup required to, to do the two machine scan. Um, so moving on to applications and conclusions. Um, what do we actually gain from scanning this fast? Um, and well, what it does is decrease the moving camera effect during internet-wide scans. Even when you're scanning and it takes 45 minutes, um, there's a chance that some hosts may appear online and then go offline before we see them, or they may change IP addresses and we may double count them. Um, so scanning faster sort of decreases this, this, the moving camera and it gets us a, a shorter, higher resolution picture of the internet, which may be helpful during some research as, um, and other research may be fine with, you know, daily pictures of, of what does HTTPS look like. This also uh, enables faster multi-packet scanning things, you know, trace routes, um, anything that needs more than one packet, um, you can do it 10 times faster. And obviously, um, internet-wide scanning can be used for vulnerability detection and ex exploitation. Um, there's sort of an emerging threat here. Like, you can start getting 10 gig connections at Amazon EC2 instances now, um, more universities and, and large institutions are getting them. Attackers are going to have them soon, and, and you can bet that they'll be scanning very fast as these connections become more and more commodity. Um, and so, um, <coughs> like, ultimately, ultimately, 10 gig scanning can be used by both attackers and defenders alike, um, and so we wanted to get in first. Um, I mean, IPv4 is a fixed size, but networks keep getting faster, so we're going to be able to keep scanning and scanning faster until we finally get around to moving to IPv6. Um, and with that, I will take any questions. As a reminder, uh, ZMAP is open source and online. All of our changes have been merged into master in ZMAP as of last night um, and can be downloaded from GitHub, and we'll be making it into the next major stable release of ZMAP shortly. Um, you can contact me on Twitter and any questions. Um, um, 
one question, one comment. Um, from your paper, I know that you haven't looked at our research called Port Bunny from a couple of years back. Um, you should de definitely do because uh, it explains your drop mm -hmm. in uh, hit rate. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you can actually measure which part in the network is actually eating your packets. Mm -hmm. Um, I can later explain to you many, many different ways your packets can get mm -hmm. lost and mm -hmm. uh, what, I, what I call uh, being routed out of the, uh, out of the cooling fan. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that explains this. And we had, so basically our, uh, uh, we finally found out that our port scanner is very fast, but it's also a very good performance test for anything that claims like gigabit light speed. Mm -hmm. um, so did you, did you, try and, and point it like without randomizing the, the target IP addresses, but like staying on one network and see which part of the path dies. Because that's that's what happened to us. Like mm -hmm. you, you scan a corporate network even inside and then mm -hmm. shit just dies on you. And that could be an interesting direction. Uh, no, we didn't try removing the randomization. Um, uh, we try to keep it in there so that um, obviously as a research uh, or experiment that could be interesting, but we do our best to keep it there and not overload remote networks, but Just that's definitely something to look at. On a Friday night mm -hmm. uh, with a couple of beers, do that and see mm -hmm. shit dying. Uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so with your uh, sharding and chunking enabled, um, have, have you evaluated if you could just, you know, split it to 10 boxes going one gig E? Um, so sharding does enable uh, scanning from just splitting up into multiple hosts. Uh, we implemented that as well. Um, we emphasized uh, all of our changes on, on scanning from one host though. Um, uh, just because that's sort of the goal of ZMAP. Um, if you have, you know, the uplink for 10 hosts, um, you could do that, but, I mean, we can do it on one machine, so um, you may as well do it on one machine. So does it also exhibit the same hit rate issues? Um, we didn't test that at 10 gigabit, um, but they're all going through the same uplink. Hey, so obviously you're you're fast enough, but I'm um, I'm wondering if you looked at using other ways of uh, generating the addresses. Um, it seems like using something like a maximal LFSR would be even faster than uh, what you're using to generate addresses. Um, it, it is possible. There, there's definitely faster ways. Um, you know, the, a different port scanner called Mascan uses something that we think is faster. Um, but we really like the randomization property um, as well as it's actually uh, fast enough. Um, the reason we can't hit faster is because we have trouble rate limiting to close to 10 gig E, because once you go faster than it, your, your card starts dropping packets. I have a question. Uh, have you compared your system with uh, the latest uh, mass scan uh, from Rob Graham? Because he cites mm -hmm. the entire internet under three minutes. Yes, um, we have actually. Um, <laughs> and so we had their, their tests, um, they implemented it using 10 gig using PF ring uh, back in September, but they didn't actually have access to a 10 gig connection. Um, and so all of their 10 gig tests were performed sort of just between two servers that they hooked together. Um, we uh, obviously tried running it on our servers and we found that it hit only about uh, 6.4 million packets per second and had a much lower hit rate. Um, and we assume this is just due to MassCan's 10 gig functionality not being tested much in the wild yet. Uh, as I recall, the issue was actually uh, threadedness. Mm -hmm. Uh, their stack, uh, their user land stack uh, was uh, uh, not multi-threaded. Um, so. the, the configuration we used uh, duplicated the one they used in, in, their, in, in their post, um, which was used several RSS queues to have multiple threads um, because then they could open mm -hmm. multiple, essentially open the interface more than once. Well, we'll be looking forward to uh, mm -hmm. further comparisons because mm -hmm. the race apparently mm -hmm. is on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have some more details on that in the paper. More questions for David? Are ready to go to lunch? Yeah. <laughs> right, thanks.